Timing is everything. No matter how good something is, its success is more often determined by whether it's introduced at the right time. If it's too early, the world isn't ready for it, and if it's too late, the world has already moved on. Even in the world of railways, there's countless examples of a great idea arriving at the wrong time. And that's exactly what happened to what could have been Russia's greatest steam locomotive. <laughs> By 1948, traffic on Soviet railways was increasing significantly. Longer and heavier trains required two or sometimes three locomotives to pull them, and as a result, bigger and more powerful locomotives were wanted in order to keep up with demand. The USSR experimented with some larger locomotive designs and came up with some impressive ten-wheeled engines, but found it difficult to produce a single engine big enough to do the work, but also not so big and heavy that it'd wreck rails and bust bends like the AA-20. In trying to find a design that would work, Lev Sergevich Lebedyansky, chief engineer of the Central Locomotive Design Bureau, proposed using a Malay layout instead of traditional fixed-frame designs. In the 1930s, Lebedyansky had the opportunity to visit the American Locomotive Company's workshops where he saw the construction of the Union Pacific's Challengers, and upon hearing more about their performance, felt that a similar Malay design would be ideal for use on Soviet rails, as they were not only powerful, but flexible and had a relatively light axle load. Unfortunately for him, he was only deputy chief designer at the time, and it took until 1939 for him to finally become chief. It wasn't until after the Second World War that he was able to begin working on his own Malay designs properly. He came up with a fairly sturdy 2662 design, measuring in at 17.4 meters long and weighing 147 tons. The engine was equipped with 1,500mm driving wheels, four 500 by 800 mm cylinders, superheating, and was capable of reaching 90 km an hour. What kind of valve gear it had, I'm unsure, but it's likely it was Geisinger valve gear, as that seemed to be his go-to choice for his other designs. Classified as the P-34, or PE-34 in its native tongue, the engine was assembled at the Kolomensky plant in 1948, and considering it was the country's first attempt at building a Malay engine, it came together surprisingly well. Not only did it have an axle load of 18 to 20 tons, meaning it could run pretty much anywhere on the Soviet network, but it was powerful too. That, however, is about all the information available on the P-34, as it never entered mainline service on account of how complex it was to repair and maintain. Afterwards, Lebedyansky spent some time designing the P-36 passenger engines, which were built in 1950, before turning his attention back to building better freight locomotives. Still believing that Malays were the way to go, he went back to the drawing board and came up with a larger 2884 design. This engine was essentially a bigger version of the previous P-34, with the same sized 1,500mm driving wheels, but had a bigger boiler, wider cylinders measuring 575 by 800 mm and came in at 22.5 meters long and weighed around 214 tons. On top of that, it was fitted with three-point spring suspension, tapered roller bearings, water heater, pneumatic grate pumps, mechanical stoker, smoke deflectors, and a smoke extinguishing device to protect drivers. Strangely, unlike many of its American counterparts, this design didn't use compound high- and low-pressure cylinders, but had four identical high-pressure ones instead. While Lebedyansky did this rather than using the more economical compound layout isn't recorded. Two of these locomotives were completed in December 1954 and classified as the P-38s, numbered 0001 and 0002 respectively, with them both having slightly different smoke box designs. In January 1955, one of them was sent to the Krasnoyarsk Railway for testing, pulling heavy wagons up and down the steep grades with the hopes it'd be able to climb hills as steep as 9%. It was during these tests that the P-38 proved its mettle as not only a powerful, but sturdy machine, capable of pulling the heavy loads it was given along the steep, twisting grades of the line while comfortably passing through the harsh Siberian cold. 
It even managed to show off its durability after being involved in an accident. During a test run in October 1955, the engine was hauling a 3,500 ton train when it was accidentally diverted onto a track undergoing maintenance at Corablino Station Crossing. The rails weren't strong enough to carry the engine's weight and broke beneath it, causing it to roll onto its right side and come to rest on the bank. Despite the derailment, workers and local military troops were able to quickly right the engine and it was repaired and back in action in no time. As impressive as the P-38 was, it did come with its fair share of problems too. Flexible pipes were used instead of ball joints to transfer steam to the front bogey, with the intention of using them to prevent steam from leaking, but many of these joints were still found to leak regardless. Other sliding joints often became damaged as dirt and grime built up in and around them, which combined with the freezing weather only made leaks worse. On top of that, the engine was fairly complex to maintain compared to the other, more conventional locomotives it worked alongside. It's also possible that with all the cylinders being high pressure instead of compounded, the boiler would have likely struggled to keep up with the demand of the cylinders for prolonged periods of time. Nothing is written to suggest this is the case, but four high pressure cylinders working at full power would have certainly been taxing on the boiler. Regardless, it seems the P-38 was satisfactory enough to justify building two more by the end of 1955. The engines were completed and ready to go by the new year, but tragically, they never got the chance to enter service, as in February 1956 during the Communist Party Congress, plans were put in place to cease construction of steam locomotives and instead invest in diesel power and electrification. With only four of these giant engines built and the extra effort that would be needed to maintain them, it simply didn't make sense to bring these experimental and possibly temperamental locomotives into service. And as a result, testing was stopped and all four were put to one side until 1959, when they were transferred to the Belgorod Economic Council for use as boiler houses. All of them were eventually scrapped. It's a shame, not only were the P-38 some of the most impressive steam locomotives built in Soviet history, but had the capacity to be some of the most powerful engines they'd ever built too. Not bad considering they were only the second attempt to make a Malay design in Russia. Whether they truly would have been Soviet railway stars or another in a long line of ambitious but rubbish experiments, we'll never really know. But let them be a reminder that no matter how well executed an idea is, it's all for naught if it's not done at the right time. Subscribe for more.